All right, Chad, I am ready to go for tonight. NCAA, again, last night was one of our best, if not the best night that we had had in a long time with this particular game. Having, you know, ruined Virginia Tech season and ultimately getting that fifth prestige star back. We know that the majority of our recruits are already locked up, which is great. The big question will be player development, position changes, all the fun stuff with the position changes, because it's like, just what the hell do we even do? But thankfully, it's not as dire of a situation as it was last year. Let's see, recruiting. Beautiful. So for Francisco Lindor, they offer 325 for 10 years, and apparently he rejected it. Jesus. Before you played this at 2 I thought I was the only person who still played it. I still love this game. I absolutely love it. And Cubs offered five uh, years, 70 million for Rizzo. Jesus. UMass has so much hope right now. They do, but hope is incredibly dangerous. Uh, with that, 10 prospects left. Everyone gets an hour worth of time. Kyle Love. Go ahead and schedule you for a visit this week. So pretty much everyone is going to get that visit this week. Uh, shit talk Texas, which is always fun. I wonder how no touching is doing. <laughs> you know what's funny is uh, when we were playing the no touching clip last night, I thought about that. For anyone who doesn't get that reference on stream and once upon a time, we had a st we had started essentially the, uh, the be a pro version of this game. And we made a Norwegian N-O-E-T-J-O-U-C-H-I-N-G. No touching. And, uh... He was, he was a beast. He was a freak. So, I mean, I, I feel like the high school he went to before he even got to college, they're just like, yeah, he's not allowed to play anymore. You know, he's like the 37-year-old man playing Little League where it's like, I don't think you're actually the age you're saying you are. Remember, I'm ahead. Some of these. I, I don't bother too often with the, uh, with the quick calls. Because if I do and then we don't get someone, I'm going to be like, well, could we have not done the quick calls and then would we have ended up with them? So. Alright, Bobby Floyd. Good old Bobby Floyd. Merritt Island, Florida. Trying to steal him away from Troy. And we're doing a pretty good job of it. Which is nice. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can talk a whole lot of trash about Troy. It's very nice. Like, all they have is academic prestige, but ours is better. So, like, you're screwed. Uh, let's go for that A minus very high. Guy Gee Rouse. Call him what you will. Don't really need this guy anymore, but at this stage, why the hell not? You know? I'm not against the idea of having an abundance of pretty good tight end options. So. Quick calls are the best options for you. Eh. I'd still rather be in control of it. And I pretty much know what I'm aiming for, so. Let's see. Daryl Townsend. Plus, obviously, for this week, too, we got to make sure that we schedule everyone for visits, so. It is a pretty important week. Strongsville, Ohio. Oh boy, a lot of those bees don't line up. That is unfortunate. Alright, Daryl. What do for you? Let's see, Dan Hill. Lone Grove, Oklahoma. The Pry. Lewis, what's up, buddy? We're doing quite well. Been having quite a bit of fun still with the games we've been playing on stream. Personally, things are going well. I got no room to complain. Doing my best to enjoy things when they're going well, rather than, uh, you know, dreading what could be going wrong. It's like, well, it's not, so... Enjoy what I got. Nick Mac, Patty Wack. 
Please don't go to Troy. Sign with my team B. My new best friend. Oh, again, can't talk trash about Troy. Durant, Mississippi. Home of Kevin. Named for Kevin. That's a true fact. Nobody look it up. Nobody look it up. Alright, we'll go there. We'll go there. We'll go there. Three dudes left. Jeremy Newsom. Talk a whole lot of trash about Utah. Talk a whole lot of trash about Utah. This is going very well so far. Talk a whole lot of trash about Utah. Talk a whole lot of trash about Utah. Talk a whole lot of trash. Birdnells, what's going on? That was an incredible week of trash talking. Captain Anarchy. Captain Anarchy. What is up? Haven't you caught the latest Toogie's Day? Oh, haven't caught it. Um, well, there'll be a new one out tomorrow. Are the Bruins cooked? No. But I will be talking about the Bruins quite a bit tomorrow. Uh, in terms of, hey, things aren't perfect, you know? But that's to be expected. Absolutely burying Utah. That's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. Someone brought up how most colleges are only good at one sport. Best counter I can make is Sask 6 Florida, one basketball, one football. Right! Biscuit, that's fair. But obviously, you know, that alludes to their point being correct, right? Where it's like, oh, hey, this is a freaking rarity, isn't it? Shout out to, shout out to Tim Tebow and Florida. The God, that 06 Florida team was led by Tebow, and then the basketball team was led by Yokim Noah, weren't they? Who just retired, which is fucking weird. It's like, what is life? All right, we are done again. Ten recruits, six scholarships. Correct. Yeah, see, I thought so. Who else? You know what? That's what we're going to look up. While we sim. Can you recruit Kanye? I wish. I wish. Every team needs a batshit insane person. Uh, 2006 Florida Gators basketball roster. That's what I want to know. No, was it the 06? 06, 05, 016? Corey Brewer, Al Horford. Jesus. And then, yeah, the 06, 07, Horford was still... Imagine having to deal with Joachim Noah and Al Horford. Fuck that. It's like, no wonder why they won. Jesus. Hey, we got some recruits, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Love, Nick Mack, Newsom, Floyd, Hill, and Townsend. We are officially out of scholarships. We are officially out. <laughs> Our recruitment is done. Beautiful. Just like that. One week was all it took. We are officially out of scholarships. So I feel bad for Beck, Rouse, Cunningham, and Ward. But you guys shouldn't have dicked around. Hate to tell you, but we are out of here. You guys should not have dicked around. You had so much time to accept our offer. And now you get to live in regret. You will rue the day. To signing day we go. I mean, I'm sure we finish with the number one recruitment class in the nation again. That's just kind of how it goes. Did I see this brilliant Sabres meme? Tell them off, Sabres. Assert yourself. That's my win. Great, now let them have <laughs> That is... That is incredible. Poor Buffalo, man. Poor Buffalo. There was, um... God. There was an incredible meme in the past week at the top of, uh... At the top... Of, uh... Of Reddit here. Um, it was related to the Sabres, too. And it's just incredible. And it's this one right here. I mean, let's see if I can click on it and get it into a bigger picture. It 
It's so bad. It's so bad. Oh my god, the... Poor... Poor Sabres fans, man. I'll be sure to check out the pod tomorrow, but I really think the Bruins are going to consider selling some assets and going for a top 20 pick. That I disagree with. This is not the draft to sell off. It is far too big of a crapshoot. And when you have... They're not in Rangers territory. And that's something we talked about last night. They're not in Rangers territory. Like, they're not at the point where you're like, yeah, we could make it, but if we make it, we're probably not going to go far. Like, no. You're at the stage where if you can add the right pieces at the deadline, they could absolutely go far. It's just a matter of if they do. Like, if, you, you, if you're telling me, like, the Islanders and Caps and Pens are that much further ahead than the Bruins, that the Bruins are screwed and there's no chance they make it out of the East, nah. I, I disagree with that vehemently. So... Yeah, I don't think it's the year to be like, oh, let's strip away some pieces and come back stronger the next two or three years. Like, nah, it's... Now is not the right time for that. Now is definitely the time where it's like, hey, cool, they don't have the most stocked cupboards in the first place, but you empty those fucking cupboards out to go for it because Patrice Bergeron is going to be 36 years old pretty goddamn soon. Now is the time to make something happen. They have all of their draft picks... Whether it be the studs, the Vakaninans, you give up who you have to give up to make these deals happen. 100%. 100%. I mean, the fact is, too, they're without Carlo, they're without Marshawn. Like, they have injuries. Andre Kasha hasn't played all year. So. All right, to signing day. And we'll see what we got in terms of the top classes. And indeed, we had the number one recruitment class in the nation. One five-star alongside Ohio State. We had one more four-star. So, there we go. The number one recruitment class in the nation. Bama led the way in terms of five-stars. Because, of course, they did. I have a tale of a feeling that they're playing Barry Trotson for... I mean, maybe. But... That's the thing. The Bruins don't have to score a ton against the Islanders. I know they've done terribly against them, but if you're playing the Islanders, you don't have to score a ton. One or two goals can be enough, which helps because the Bruins can't score goals. So, all right. To the position changes. This is always the tough spot. So our quarterback this year is going to be Derek Good. We have Seth Davis and Tyrone Gibbons behind him more than likely. Although, in terms of the athletes, there is Chad Owens who is definitely a quarterback or a wide receiver. It makes sense to put him at quarterback because we have way more talent at wide out. So yeah, our uh, our quarterbacks are set. I mean, like yeah, Derek Good's a really good running back, but I don't really think we have anybody else that we can move over to QB. And then we can redshirt either Davis or Gibbons this year. Not really sure who we're gonna want to redshirt, so. But there, we're good. Although, really quickly, you know, for the hell of it. For the hell of it. Um, let's just take full inventory. So, good is a 90 rated QB. And 84 rated running back. He's 74 wide out, so we definitely wouldn't have him anywhere else. Uh, Seth Davis, clearly a quarterback. He can't play anywhere else. Oh, QB. So we got Davis. Tyrone Gibbons. Clearly a quarterback as well. And then again, you have Chad Owens, who is clearly a 73 rated QB or a 74 rated wide receiver. Definitely play him a quarterback. Running back wise, Patrick Lindsay is our top guy, and it's very clear he uh, he should be a running back as well. Oops, uh, Mr. Hall, very clearly also a running back. Paul Perry, very clearly also a running back. Terrence Johnson. So we're running back. It's always the offense that's easier to set up. And then Eric Wall, also a running back. So the first two positions are set. 
Fullback wise, we're going to be cutting Scott Cannon, but we have Chad Terry and Vinny Vincent as our dudes there. It's a 73 running back. I mean, Terry is pretty versatile. Definitely wouldn't put him at running back or wide receiver. I'm going to move him to tight end really quickly. Vincent's definitely a fullback. Wide receiver wise, I cannot believe David Fountain is a senior. That's absolutely insane. Kellen Scott, also now a senior. Clifford, the big red kaiju. Definitely staying at wide receiver. David Justice, good running back, but better wide out. And uh, yeah, because of Hall, he's, uh, he's better suited there. Stevens as well, somebody else that can play running back, but isn't really needed there. Michael Harris, definite wide receiver. Kyle Love. Keep him at wide out as well. And Bobby Floyd. Can also stay at wide out. Sent for the tight ends. Which honestly is a pretty good spot to be in here. I mean, Tony Hancock's a beast. This guy could also be a good wide out, but again, like he's going to be an elite tight end. Michael Morgan. Same thing. Could be a decent wide out, but a really good tight end. And then Terry. It's a 76 at fullback. Is there anyone who's better at fullback? Johnston. Okay, so there we go. So Ricky Johnston will be the second choice fullback. Alongside Vincent. And that way we can develop uh, Chad Terry as a tight end instead. And then this year we'll probably actually redshirt Michael Morgan. So it'll be Hancock, Terry, and Carey at tight end. So the offense is looking pretty good. I do have to reestablish the old line really quickly. And then as always, I'm super worried about what to do defensively. Do you base it off of best rating available? Do you base it off of speed ratings and stuff like that? It's always what I struggle with is trying to set up this defense. But looking at the old line then, what do we got? So Andrews drops by two or three. Harris is probably more of a guard. Richards drops a little bit. Hmm. All right, out of the top five. It's kind of a tough call who to move. I think we move Josh Andrews over to left tackle. Move Trevor Harris to left guard. Richards over to right tackle. Kane. Hmm. Richards stays at center. Because Ron Kane's actually a decent tackle. And then Townsend can move the guard. All right, cool. So we at least have our offensive line set, at least the starters. Rodgers can play wherever. Koch is better at tackle. So move him over to left tackle. King, probably better suited for center. So we'll move Rodgers over to guard. Matt Young, I'll move him over to right tackle. Tony Moore, move him to right guard. For the most part, we're looking good. Got a good amount of depth. Might be lacking some elite pieces, but again, it sucks that Pat Scott's kind of a bit of a bust here. But at least we have the uh, the depth options that we need. Then, so defensively, this is the problem. So many of these guys can play linebackers. So many of these guys can play defensive end. If we base it off of speed, there isn't a single person here who moves to linebacker. Everyone's on the defensive side. Like Mason could be like an 84 rated linebacker, but he's a 93 defensive tackle. Then at linebacker, everyone's over an 80 speed at least. So we leave them all at linebacker. Not that like a 78 speed can't be versatile at linebacker. I think anybody who's in the 70s could be moved 
Like, none of these defensive tackles would be moved, aside from Mason. They're so slow. But, like, Marshall, you know, he's in the 70s. Bennett, he's in the 70s. It's not really too much of a reason to move these guys. So I think for the most part, then, if I still base it off of speed above all else, we're set. Newsom, though, is the one that I'm worried about. He is a little bit slower than I'd normally prefer to have someone in the secondary. I mean, not that an 86 is slow, but... So if you look at linebackers, Geetry being there, Williams being there, Sanders is a sophomore. most part, everyone's okay. Guess I'll have to make the exception of leaving Newsom there. But then it's like we have this ungodly fast secondary. I feel pretty comfortable moving Brown to linebacker, though. That's not too much of a drop for him. We're gonna need some special teams this year, too. Alright, so really quickly, then. As we always do. I'm sorry I can't, like, answer too much in terms of responding to chat, but obviously, I think you can tell. You gotta kinda focus at this stage to see who your best options are. Put the pieces of a puzzle together. It's on this defensive line. Mason drops by five. Berg drops by a lot. Walker plummets. Bowser barely drops. And again, for the 70s at linebacker, he's not going to replace anybody. So. Mason's a great defensive tackle, but I'd rather have him drop off. So I think we'll move Bowser to the left, Mason to the right, have Berg and Walker at defensive tackle. Marshall... Another great defensive end. Trey Bennett, a good defensive end. Patton, not really, drops by five. Washington only drops by one. Hubbard barely drops. Gordon really plummets. Atkins, not bad. Thompson. Mr. Harris. Robinson drops off way too far. Nicholson's not bad. That's the wall, brother. He's looking better there. And Dan Hill drops off a bit too far. So we do have a decent amount of defensive tackles. Quite a few of them are freshmen, too. lot of defensive ends. So that's where we could cut players, redshirt players, move them to linebacker if we need the depth, which I don't think we do. And for the linebackers, move everybody into the middle. Do the same thing that we essentially just did with the defensive line. I did see the Tyson Berry incident, and uh, yeah. Again, players that don't wear neck guards, I, I don't understand it at all. I really don't. Gidry goes up by a point. William stays the same. So let's put Gidry back out on the left. Stanford out on the right. Sanders out on the right. Nick Mack can go out on the left. Thomas stays in the middle. Williams out on the right. Carter stays in the middle. Bass stays in the middle. Goodwin out on the left. Downing. In the middle, and Brown out on the left. I mean, we have linebacker depth now, that's for sure. And then uh, for safety, let's move everybody over the corner like we do and see what we're dealing with. But I don't think it's going to take that much time to set up the team here. I mean, there's some players that could definitely be moved from secondary to linebacker, some defensive linemen that could get moved, but. For the most part, I think I'm going to use the speed as the 
the big decider because otherwise it's a pain in the ass. Also, uh, in terms of kicking, 99 accuracy, 87 power versus 95-93. Yeah, Rich Robinson's got to be our kicker. He doesn't have as good of accuracy, but he's got a bit more of a boot. Early Scott will move over to punter. Killjoy, take it easy, buddy. We will catch you later. It was good to see you. Again, hope you're doing all right. All right, so John Johnson's got some good ratings. Let's see, I mean, he goes up going to safety. Cleveland goes up. Not by much, but we'll still move. Oh, up. good much everyone's for going you! To go up. Malik, thank you for the follow. And JD, buddy, thank you for that host. What's going on, man? It is good to see you. Hope you're doing well. You're just in time to witness the putting together of a team that'll break our hearts because they'll blow it. <laughs> we always have a bit of hope and optimism, and then they break my heart. But what is going on, man? How'd the stream go? I presume you were on NCAA. Sweatso! Sweatso's here too, goddamn. It's a full house. <laughs> so it's like it's Bob for Bam. Oh, spam in the chat. It's a lovely thing. Too much hype. <laughs> JD, I'm doing well, man. No complaints. Oh, you know how it is going through the randomness of setting up a team. Let's see, an 85, an 81. Kennedy is actually better at safety. So what we'll do is we'll move Richard Kennedy over there. John Johnson will be our starting free safety. Uh, he didn't get banned. He got a five-second timeout, though, from the bot. Move Matty Cleveland back over the corner. Keys can definitely the be moved back. The man was a 50 and 07. 29 months. Good lord. 29 months of supporting the content. You'd love to see that. 50, thank you, buddy. How are you? I hope you're good. Uh, yeah, Alec, I mean, there's there's plenty of examples of shit like that happening in the NHL, right? Malarchuk, Richard Zednick. I, I can't understand people that still take the risk and don't wear a good amount of equipment. I just don't get it. All right, let's see. There's Brent Williams that will move over. Southern Williams. Definitely move him over, too. Johnny Walker. Again, we are so close to being done with this. Walker, I don't know. Avery, definitely move him over. Burrell. All right, Burrell and Walker. All right, Walker will stay there. Move Jeff Burrell over. Anthony Price, move him over. And then Newsom. All right, so let's see. We have five options there, four sophomores. So really, we only need three dudes. Who else can move back to corner? Who else should move back to corner? Jackson's a 76. Walker drops by three. It's got to be Newsom. All right, I think we're set up for this season here. Obviously, I wish player development happened first so we'd know for sure where we are, but for the most part now, I think we're in a pretty good spot. This team's ready to go. Might be a little bit uncertain in how we're setting the team up, but we gotta do what we gotta do. Doogie Bot, I need one of those. They're delightful. All you gotta do is find someone who knows Twitch and let him do everything. It's great. Uh, AJ, what the hell was the take? Uh, AJ, yeah, no, you're right, to be honest. That's the problem, right? Uh, NASCAR was flirting around with the Hans device before Dale Sr. died, and then Dale Sr. died, and they're like, oh, you should do it! <laughs> The NHL, yeah, we should probably use neck guards and further protection. Nah, but maybe not. We'll leave it up to the players. Somebody dies. All right, now we'll do something. So, I was wondering why player dev doesn't happen first. To mess with your head, TK. Training results. So, the team for this season, we have 94 overall quarterback Derek Good from es Escatalpa? Escatalpa. Add that to the list of places. Escatalpa. Mississippi. Uh, Seth Davis is looking all right. Tyrone Gibbons will definitely be redshirted this year since Davis cannot be. Running back. Patrick Lindsay is now a junior. He's up to an 89. 
Charles Hall, Perry, Johnson, good development there. Fullback wise, Vinny Vincent up to a 81 at this point. Frank, what's up, by the way? Ricky Johnson, the 74, and of course, Scott Cannon will be cut. This receiving core is disgusting, and all of them are going to play. Our top four receivers are at least a 91 or better. That's fantastic. Tremendous weapons for good this year. Tight end wise, Morgan up to an 84. On the O-line, Josh Andrews up to a 90. 91 for Trevor Harris. Rogers behind him is an 81. Richards up to an 84. Ron Kane an 83. On the defensive line, I mean Marshall and Bowser. That's a hell of a combination. On the right-hand side, Robert Mason. And on defensive tackle, Charles Berg and Michael Walker. Jesus. Linebacker, good one up to a 76. Thomas up to a 77. An 82 for Chaz. Corner. This team's looking good. John Johnson up to a 92. Richard Kennedy. Kennedy. Up to an 88. Kicker-wise, good old Rich Rob looking like a 96 and a 93 for early Scott. This team is stacked. This team is absolutely stacked, and I am so excited to see what happens this season. In terms of cutting players, 12 dudes. All right. So quarterback, nobody goes. Running back, nobody goes. Fullback-wise, we know that the cannon is out of here. He was the early cut, or the easy cut. Uh, I hate to say it, Bobby Floyd might have to go for the fact he's only a 76, but that means we'd have to recruit quite a few wideouts because we have three seniors leaving. So wide receiver is going to have to be a, a focused position. You could make the argument to cut a tight end, but again, I want a red shirt. Um, one of these guys, if I can. On the O-line, I mean, Pat Scott at a 63 is a pretty obvious shout to get cut. And then we have a lot of defensive line options that could go, especially at tackle. Be kind of a waste to cut Edward Brown if they're trying to move him over to linebacker, but that might be what we're looking at here. It's actually going to be kind of difficult to cut the amount of players I want to cut here. Or have to. I mean, quarterback, we're good. I mean, I guess in a less than ideal world, we could cut somebody. But, again, at least we'll have our three for the future. Hall's gone at the end of the year, so Lindsey, Perry, Johnson. <sighs> Terrence Johnson might have to go. I think Terrence, I mean, he has 98 speed, for God's sakes, but he's never going to be the starting running back on this team. Yeah, he'd be looking at getting red shirt this year. <sighs> I don't know. We have to carry two fullbacks. Wide receiver-wise, I hate to say it, but Bobby Floyd's got to go. Even as a four-star, that starting overall is just way too low. So it sucks to get rid of a most recent recruit, and apparently I'm going to lose my Florida pipeline, but I, I got to do it. So I'm not too worried about the pipeline bonus. <sighs> Hate to say it as well, Carey might have to go. I don't know who else to get rid of. I mean, if I keep track of the players that could get cut, I mean, we're looking at, I mean, Potentially Johnson at running back. Because we got to get rid of 10 dudes. I really don't want to get rid of a QB. But Givens is the one guy who doesn't fit the theme of having speed. What does the throw power look like for Givens at this stage? It is a 90. He's got a cannon of an arm. <laughs> we need a clip of Homer cutting everybody. It's true. That would be great. The Wildcats, man. They're all about the Wildcats. Uh, I hate to say it again at tight end. Carey might have to go just being the weakest of the bunch. Do you really need two fullbacks? Yeah, I do. At least normally I do. Apparently this year, maybe not. 
Normally I do need two fullbacks. I guess uh, by default we weren't on a uh, on a setup where I needed two fullbacks. Last year we were at the start of the year. So uh, Johnston, I hate to say it, is probably on the outs because we carry Vincent for one more year and then have to have to go with somebody else and recruit somebody else or move a tight end over. Pat Scott at left guard is definitely on the chopping block. Can maybe make an argument for Murray. I like your hustle. That's why it was so hard to catch. <laughs> um, God, this is a tough call from here. Very tough call from here. I mean, I think Lester Harris over Nicholson. It's just a very close race. Uh, defensive tackle Dan Hill would certainly have to go. That brings us up to six. Linebacker-wise, I mean, I know we moved him over from safety, but he just didn't fit in with what we were looking for, but I think Brown brings us up to seven. Still gets difficult from there. I mean, Newsom, I think Newsom might be out too. I mean, there's no denying he'll develop, but just doesn't fit right now. We have so many sophomores. And then it's safety, as much as it sucks to say, Anthony Price would go too. I mean, it's a good sign that we're having to cut players like this that just got here. But, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would bring us up to nine if those were the players that were let go. Again, if we keep four quarterbacks, Davis is the QB next year. Gibbons would have been redshirted, so the order is Davis, Gibbons, Owens at quarterback, unless we get somebody else. Running back wise, I mean, I hate to say it, but I think Eric Wall's got to go. Or it's Johnson for the speed. Wall obviously has a chance of getting better. Johnson won't be around for that long. I mean, Lindsey's definitely our guy. Hall's the backup this year. And then if we redshirt Johnson, he's in line with Perry. I think Terry's got to go. That 98 speed looks good, but yeah, Terrence Johnson is on the way out. And at fullback, Ricky Johnston is also going to go. Wide receiver-wise, the real tight spot. Dropping the follow. Hell of a name. Thank you for that. Tight end-wise, we are going to drop uh, Cliff Carey as well, as much as that sucks. But again, uh, he was our backup plan in case we didn't get Tony Hancock. And we did get Tony Hancock, so it's fine. Uh, we will also drop Pat Scott off of this team. Move over to right end here. We're going to hate to say it, but Lester Harris has to go. Survival of the fittest for who can make it. Dan Hill is out. Safety turn linebacker Eddie Brown is out. Newsom is also going to go. And then Price. 94 speed, but he's got to go. I need to cut one more guy. Oh, one more guy. It's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'd ideally not cut an offensive lineman. I think we're looking at the defensive line. I mean, Marcus Bowser's a great depth option, but he would be taking a spot from somebody. Or we'd have to choose between Gordon and Robinson, potentially. Could get away with cutting a linebacker. I can't help but think it's got to be someone from the defensive line. Or someone like Brent Williams. I think it's got to be Brent. We don't need seven safeties. He's the lowest rated. He's already been red shirt. Brent Williams, you are out. And that gets us down to 70. So we had to say goodbye to some very good players, which sucks. Especially because some of them are new recruits, but it's just kind of how it panned out. 
And again, a lot of those recruits at that stage were just kind of the tack-ons because we didn't get our initial targets. But we knew we could get those guys and then hopefully adjust from there and hopefully they're useful. And unfortunately, they, uh, they weren't. They were not. All right. Uh, so while this is happening, let's look up the wonders known as Escatapaw, Mississippi, population 3,700. Notable people. Three doors down. <laughs> okay. Brad Arnold. The only original remaining member of Three Doors Down. He wrote Kryptonite in a high school math class. Shout out to Brad Arnold and Three Doors Down. Hilarious. Does this game make you carry a fullback? Yes. All right, we got nothing else to change there. So the big thing this year, guys, is again, what the hell do we do with the schedule? And I think it's fairly obvious considering fucking Arkansas State just won the national title. Uh, we need to go ahead and have a, uh, an easy schedule. Have the easiest schedule that we possibly can to uh, make the most of it. We just got to go on the run and hope for the best. All right, so we'll do the schedule first. And in terms of the schedule, again, we only get control of those early ones. So I think in an ideal setup, we would not play week seven. Actually, definitely have week nine open. Yeah, have week nine open. So our schedule is basically two ridiculous runs. So in terms of the games we can control, again, have week one off, go weeks two to six, or two to seven, actually two to eight, <laughs> have week nine off, and then go ten to fifteen. So, the easiest way, because if we look at the schedule, the non-negotiable games, we do have to play Virginia Tech and Virginia. We know Louisville's not a bad team. Apparently we're preseason ranked number seven, by the way. Hopefully that stays true. <sighs> Clemson, Florida State, we know there are tough games. The easiest games we can schedule are these non-conference opponents. That's the only thing we can do, is play non-conference opponents. I mean, yeah, we could try to schedule ourselves like a Troy to hopefully just kick the shit out of an actual team. And I'm cool with that. But there is no reason to be like, yeah, fuck it, Alabama and Air Force, A+. <laughs> like, maybe we schedule Arkansas State because they won the Natty last year so I can, like, embarrass them. But, yeah, it's, it's either one of the FCS squads or we schedule a team that we know isn't that good because fact of the matter is it's strength of schedule doesn't matter we just have to win so like if we want to schedule Connecticut to kick the shit out of them fine if we want to schedule Arkansas State maybe just to be like fuck it let's beat last year's champs fine otherwise like you know UTEP makes sense you know, kick the hell out of El Paso or Monroe like we need we need some scrub temple the greatest college of all time um, yeah, I mean, we can schedule a, a lower-ranked team for sure. We don't have to be headhunters here at this stage. It's just about the wins. Strength of schedule doesn't matter. This game gives you no credit if you lose to good teams. So. You know, honestly, I think I have our two. We'll go Buffalo, and we'll go UConn. We'll go Buffalo, and we'll go UConn. Apparently that makes the schedule a B plus instead of like a B or a B minus. I don't know if UConn's actually good. But also I just want to play UConn so I can tell them to eat pant. I think that's it. We'll schedule Buffalo and UConn. And aside from that, I mean with this conference... Uh, AJ, like I said, we can't really afford to play someone like South Carolina. They're still a good team. They're always a good team. Did you consider a conference transfer? Oh no, it's it's intentional that we're in this conference. Like it's it's supposed to be a challenge. I don't want to go down. I don't want to cheese it and be like, yeah, let's put us back in the whack and then win the national title. Like yeah, fuck that. 
I mean, yeah, could I put us in the whack and then we just steamroll shit teams all year and make the national title? Is that possible? Technically, yes. Um, <laughs> it's not something I really want to do, though, you know? And indeed, we are seventh rated right now in the nation in this preseason poll, which is beautiful. So, in terms of the red shirts this year, uh, again, obviously Tyrone Gibbons will be red shirted. I cannot red shirt Chad Owens. But Good is definitely our guy. What is Good's uh, throw power? 86. Oof, okay. So no air raid this year. Uh, but he's fast and has good accuracy. Interesting. So, again, for our quarterback, fast, bad arm, good accuracy, just to make those notes. Uh, running back, obviously. Well, there is a legitimate argument to redshirt Patrick Lindsay this year. There is a legitimate argument to let Charles Hall be the guy this oh, year. Oh, good for No you. way, DJ. Thank you for the follow, by the way. And then next year could be Lindsay and Perry. Or we just run with Lindsay and Hall. Ah, let's 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 keep Patrick Lindsay. I think it's too valuable. And it looks like honestly the running game is gonna be that much more important this year. Um, and in terms of recruitment as well. Um, the recruitment plan, yes, meh, no. Uh, we're going to need, uh, I don't think we need a quarterback. We'll put quarterback in meh, because we'll at least have three next year. Running back-wise, I'll put that in meh as well, because we will have three. We are going to need a fullback. And then wide receiver-wise, I mean, yeah, we're going to have our work cut out for us. We're losing three dudes. But, I mean, the running game is going to have to be a bigger factor this year, but we do have great receivers. It's just a shame we don't have a QB with a better arm. And then tight end wise, we're definitely going to need to recruit somebody else there because we had to cut someone. Um, I could actually redshirt Terry. And to be honest, I think I'll do that. Although he might try to transfer out. Ah, we'll carry him just in case. I don't want to risk losing that guy because then we'd really be screwed. On the O line. Can't redshirt Josh. Could redshirt Chris Rogers. Let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Redshirt Tony Moore. Alright. So again, wide out wise, there's nothing I can do. Tight end wise, no real point to redshirt Terry. <sighs> Mainly because we cut that extra fullback. So we will go ahead and redshirt Chris Rogers this year. And then Murphy can't be. We'll uh, redshirt Tony Moore as well, who's not even that good. All right. And then defensively, uh, I mean, fairly obvious here, Jesse Washington can't be redshirt, but Atkins and Kevin Wall will be. Can't redshirt Nicholson, and then defensive tackle, Ernie Thompson. I mean, definitely running a 4-3 this year. I mean, we could argue a 4-2-5 again, but I think a 4-3 would work. Um, we'll redshirt Goodwin. So we have two freshmen, Guidry and Nick Mack. And then the amount of redshirts there will be interesting. Definitely not redshirting Chaz. He's a bit too good. So at linebacker, we have one, two, three, four, five, and then in the middle, probably carry three. So Kirk Downing will get a red shirt this year. Let's red shirt Elliot Bass. We'll stick with uh, Connor Carter. So we got five outside linebackers this year, three in the middle. Should be good enough. You could argue it's not strict enough. And in a corner, pretty much have our top five. I think Matt Thomas. Matt Thomas does have to play. I barely convinced him to stay. Uh, so we'll redshirt Andre Avery this year. And that way we have our top five of Cleveland, Keys, Harrison, Powell, and Thomas. And at safety, Johnny Walker gets the redshirt. 
And, uh... Man, there's an argument for Jeff Burrell as well. Four safety... Yeah, I'm gonna carry five safeties. Let's, let's have it be Walker. It'll be Burrell in his junior year. Okay, so, uh, again, I, I am pretty liberal in terms of throwing out the red shirt options. Um, granted. Just to go back in. Yeah, Bumblebee, he was originally a defensive end, but he's actually pretty good. In terms of the O-line, we're losing one. We're only losing one dude. So I put the O-line at meh in terms of a need. Defensive end. So we still got three, four, five, six. All right, defensive, uh, defensive line in general, I'd still put as a bit of a need. It's not crazy, but it's a bit of a need. Linebackers, we definitely do not need. Like we're pretty much set at linebacker, unless there's an elite option. Corner, same thing. We're completely set. In general, in the secondary, we're completely set, unless uh, you know, unless there's someone crazy available. And then again, we are going to need a special teams option with early Scott leaving. So the red shirts are set in terms of our board. Let's see. Whoops, I did not want to create somebody. I would love to create prospects for you guys, but it would take way too long. Way too long to add in everyone's favorite prospect. All right. Big money. No whammies. Give me some five stars that are interested now. That would be great. How about an insta-commit five-star kicker? <laughs> All right. Here we go. All prospects. What do we got? Fresh off of the number one recruitment class in the nation. We'll start off at quarterback, which again is in the meh. There are five stars available, and there are a couple of four stars who are interested here as well. Raymond Clark's definitely more balanced, and yeah, Corey Scales is definitely north to Druid Hills, Georgia. He's definitely another option. There are a lot of four-star quarterbacks interested in joining us. Holy shit. I mean, there's four, but that's a lot by my definition. Ah, oh, Milford, Delaware. If it was Milford, MA, I'd have to go for it. I mean, there is the argument of a five-star quarterback to go for one to see what the hell happens. Only one's a scrambler. He ran a 4-4-8, which is nuts. We'll see. Running back-wise, again, there are four-star dudes that are interested. There is one five-star guy in Justin Ransom. Running back's also in our Mac category. Fullback-wise, we definitely need a fullback. The goal is to get one of the two-star options here. Wide receivers in our yes category. There is a five-star who is instantly interested. Benjamin Marcourt out of Randolph, Mass. So that's great news. Um, God, it's just a question of... I mean, we pretty much have to go for the five-stars and then default to focusing on the four-stars and the three-stars. It's pretty much all we can do. So yeah, a quarterback, since it's in the Mac category... Let's just say, in theory, we go for the five stars. I can instantly get Corey Scales, but like I said, I think we gotta we gotta aim high, and then to fall back on other people. So as much as like Brandon Cooper's nice, we'll focus on Justin Ransom. I mean, it's the two Oklahoma schools leading the way, which isn't surprising. He's out of Oklahoma. Uh, wide receiver, same thing. Obviously, Marcourt will get a lot of our attention. Tight end wise, we'll focus on William Chase and then go after Jackson or Newsom after that. A tackle, much as I want that four star. Let's keep our sights high. There are a lot of four stars in a lot of different positions that we could absolutely go for. God damn. Again, defensive end was kind of in the meh. Territory. We're getting way up there in terms of total recruits. I'm going to have to start optimizing. Yeah. All right, let's go back through. So a quarterback for these five stars. I mean, Travis Barry as a pocket passer has better combine results than Travis Barrett. Hmm. Wide 
receiver was where a lot of uh, a lot of dudes happened to be. Hmm. Sucks because obviously there isn't a single five star option that I don't want my name in the hat for. Even that linebacker, I don't have enough. Yeah, we are going to have to optimize. I can't go for everybody. There's a lot of five stars this year. Let's, for the moment, take out the QB. We'll take out the running back. We'll take out those O line options as well. Just for the moment. Gotta focus on what we need the most. Definitely looking at defensive end, defensive tackle. Again, linebacker wasn't needed as much, but there is a five star who wants to come here. That's a difference maker, Trent Wilson. And in secondary, no five stars. Shout out to Lee Lee. Again, four stars that want to come here, but no guarantees for the kickers. There was a four-star J.R. Burton for the punters. A couple of options as well. And for the athletes, there is a five-star athlete that wants to sign here. Sam Bennett, the pride of Calgary. <laughs> Fast as shit, too. Ran a 4-3-2. Good lord. What the hell are you? Not a quarterback. Running back or a secondary option? A jumping. Jesus. So we'll focus on Bennett as a five-star that's interested. From there, since again, fullback, wide out, defensive line, that's all covered. And then we have to figure out who else we want to go for. Whether it be the athletes or whatever else. Fuck. Mike Johnson, he's the number one recruit. He's not a quarterback. He's a wide receiver or running back. We could add him to the list. 6'6 six, six as well. Holy shit, man. He's huge. Probably a, probably a wide receiver. Bobby Vinson. Not a quarterback. He looks like a surefire wide receiver. Which again, we do need... Ah, I don't know what to do. There's so many five stars. Even in these other positions. God, who the hell do we focus on first, man? This is rough. Out of these five star QBs, who do I like the most? I mean, the fastest is Pollard by far. It's tied for the third highest bench. As the bench. It's got to be Pollard. It's got to be Pollard as that number one target. Running back wise, again, we'll add in Justin Ransom. Fullbacks were good. It sucks to have three spots taken up by fullbacks. That's not the way to do it. Fullback is so invaluable. We'll get us a fullback, but I'm not going to focus on it until late. Wide receiver wise, again, we definitely need some wideouts. You got to be tall as shit like this dude if you're not going to be that fast. All these guys are pretty goddamn fast. Can we focus on Chase? And on the O-line, who's the best option here? You are the fastest, you are also the strongest, and have the best bench. Leonard Williams. We'll look at you, at guard. Best bench by far goes to Antonio Stanley. We'll focus on him. And then at center, this guy has the, the speed edge on Jefferson and a slightly better squat, but misses out on the bench. Let's go for Clay Jefferson. And without a doubt, Brian Rutledge is the top target. It's not even close. Okay, linebacker-wise. 
This is the most amount of trouble we've had trying to figure out exactly what we want to do here. Because there are so many dudes that would be great for this team. So many five-star athletes, too. Victor West out of Alvin, Texas. Good carrying, good speed. I don't know exactly what I want to do here. I don't know exactly what I want to do here. And Victor West. I take a look at these guys. I mean, Victor West is. He's a he's a running back or a wide receiver, and he doesn't look like a particularly good one. If I'm being honest. John Nash. I mean, he's six six. Not a quarterback. He's a wide receiver. He's a six six wide receiver with incredible speed. Well, not incredible speed, but still, he's a 6'6 wideout. Let's go for Nash. Chris Allen. Not a quarterback. We are leaning towards... I mean... Good elusiveness. We're looking at, like, a running back or a secondary option. The guy just apparently can't tackle. He is fast as hell. Man, I don't know who to go for. <laughs> This sucks. This this is the first time that 35 player limit is just proving to be a nightmare for me. I'm so indecisive. Quarterback, we definitely have our top target. Running back, we have our top target. Wide receiver wise, I mean, Marquardt's up there. Aside from that, you got Brothers who's fast as, uh, pretty damn fast, tall as hell more than anything. Aside from that, it's Coley who's the fastest. John Bird's got a pretty good port. What if I, uh, if I take out John Bird for the moment? Take out Robinson. Robinson's too fast. That, man, how many four stars are in first? A ton. We could fill up the, uh, we could fill up that list with nothing but the four stars that are interested in signing here. So right now, I need to make sure I'm aiming high for the players that. One, or for the five stars that we could get, because those four stars, I mean, we should be able to fall back. All right, in theory, there's no guarantee, but for the bench, potentially signifying strength. I mean, Pollard, you know, no doubt, is the fastest mobile option. I'd presume that Travis Berry is the best pocket passer of the bunch is because of his arm. Again, running back wise, I could easily go for Brandon Cooper, but we're gonna look at Justin Ransom as the highest rated dude. Wide out wise. Like all these dudes are good. In theory, all of these dudes are good. It's like, how many do you focus on? We need wide receivers heading into next year. And tight end wise, we got our top target. The O line was in the meh category, so I don't want to put too many people on the list. And again, Williams is the best option. Stanley looks like the best option. And Jefferson. Defensive line was uh, a yes. Linebacker wise was a no, but we do have these five star options. So it's like, okay, I don't need linebackers, but there is the five star option in Trent Wilson that's actually wanting to come here. And then again, there's the athletes where it's like, okay, what the hell? Essentially, how do the athletes compare to who we're already looking at? 
God, it's so tough. So, I mean, again, Johnson's got great carrying him. He's a wide receiver. He's a wide receiver or running back. Bobby Vincent. It's definitely a wide receiver. Abraham Palmer is a quarterback. Ran a 4-4-2. And compared to Pollard, who ran a 4-4-8. Also be a receiver, a second man. This guy looks like he could play fucking anywhere. Ah, uh, I don't know what to do. Son of a bitch. So many good players available. It's unreal. This is this is the best recruitment board we've ever seen. Like at the start, this is the best board we have seen. this rate, I think it might just be for the best to just pick random dudes. Like, there's so many five stars available. And if it's clear, like, out of the gates, someone's not available, like, we just try to get into the conversation for the other ones, but I need to pick the right ones. Fuck. Palmer's definitely not going to have the same throw power as the other dude, but he's got the speed, he's got the second. Like, this dude could literally be a wide receiver, quarterback, secondary option. Never been so conflicted in recruitment options with UMass. Never been this conflicted. And we need a quarterback. Our quarterbacks at meh. So we got the best two options. Running backs at meh. So we get the only five star. There's, there's a thousand athletes. Wide receiver. Pretty much all the top dogs. Cubbies, what's up? Tight end wise, we go for the best option. O line was a meh. So we go for the best option for each of the three spots. Defensive line was in yes. So we're looking at all the five star defensive line options. Linebacker is a no, but there are five star options available, including Wilson, who wants to come here. Cubbies, I'm doing great. We're going to go after Van, Griffin, and White. Can't say no to five-star options. Even if we don't need linebackers, like those guys are essentially representing a shortcut for the program. So then from there, we can add athletes. Or other options, and we should probably be looking at the athletes. I thought this would be a fast process because we breezed through the other stages, but apparently not. Honestly, let's just go for the top dudes. It's not going to help me make up my mind any. Let's just add those 35 and see what happens. This is going to be very interesting. <laughs> just for the fact that I have... No earthly idea how the recruitment's gonna go. I have never had so many players on the list where I'm like, I want this guy, this guy, this guy, please, this guy. Like, this is gonna be kind of crazy. You know what's getting towards deadline season when we start getting commercials. Right. Right. I'm excited for it. I should be streaming that day, maybe. It's gonna be a real busy week. It's gonna be a real busy week. 
God, so how's this first bit of recruitment gonna go? That is the question. Uh, so worried about some of the dudes I left off the board, though. I would have continued to have, I would have had to go like super in depth and just be like, all right, let me write down or take screenshots of the combine results, and it's just not something I wanted to do at that stage. It, it is like our best potential option. So, regardless of that. Preseason polls, we jump from like 23rd to 7th in the nation as a 99 rated team. Five stars out of six, of course. Only ahead of us are Georgia, Virginia Tech, LSU, USC, Bama, and Oklahoma. So, of course, Virginia Tech is a massive concern. We start the season ranked 7th, which is nuts. Um, Preseason All-Americans as well. We don't have anybody up there for first team All-American, unfortunately. And then championship contenders. I mean, look at that. We're projected to be a consistent top three team. It's a great spot to be in. We turn that around a little bit. All right, let's look at recruiting here. Uh, Ace, I will answer that in a moment. Let me get to where I have to sim week to week. That'll give me time. Quarterback. So oh, shit. All right. So Pollard and Barry. Not a not a ton of interest out of the gates for the two of them. Again, we have 600 minutes. We got 35 people. It's like 15 minutes per, if that. Mr. Pollard, let's start off. Start off with some promises here to these guys. Running out of time to beat two Glenn. That we are. And our coach integrity is almost through the roof. Pretty much all we can do for this week. Newsom also doesn't have us inside his top eight, which isn't surprising. Continue to see if we can make up ground for him. Wide receiver wise, it's looking a little bit better which is nice. Um, again, all I can do for this first week is just promise these dudes to try and get into the conversation and then second guess every decision that I make because of uh, the players that I didn't put out on the board. but. Can't get everybody great. The good thing is this might help our chances in theory. I mean, unless the AI don't technically have to play by the same rules, you would think it would technically open up a spot for us to maybe snag some people away from the Alabamas and the Oklahomas of the world because obviously everyone's attention right now is focused on, you know, 50 plus five star dudes. <laughs> maybe not that many, but it feels like it. William Chase is going to be uh, an uphill battle, unfortunately. Leonard Williams, we're in a top four scenario already. A guard, top four for Antonio Stanley. And first for Clay Jefferson, which is, again, phenomenal. So hopefully that works. Defensive line. Luther Keenan were up there already. Very good. Rutledge, not so much. I'm just, I'm really second guessing everything because of those dudes that we didn't add to the board. Nothing. I mean, I gotta view it as the guys that we have on the board, though, are great already, so. Keith Bell, Mount Pleasant, Texas. That's pretty much all I can do right now is just offer everybody that initial promise to get that big point boost and see what happens from there. Kevin Van, out of Hawaii. This guy looks unreal. Again, I didn't necessarily need a linebacker, but 
When there are five stars available, you gotta try. You know, we didn't target any of the four stars that want to come here, and we probably won't unless it's very late in the process and there's nobody else better available. But, I mean, even Trent Wilson, like, we were first for him without having to do anything. So. And then again, we didn't go for anybody in the secondary. J.R. Burton, Galax, Virginia. We're in third for him so far. And then for the punters, oh boy, we got an uphill battle for the punters. What the fuck is even that city name? Oh, Michigan. Marcus Malone out of Charlottesville. And Noah Smith out of Jasper, Alabama. So many top prospects out of Alabama. Let me get to the athletes. Bennett, we're in first four already. Use a full hour. Seems like almost a guarantee that we can get this guy. Yeah, no insta commit, which isn't surprising. Let's find out those interests. The Y is silent, if I recall. I don't know if that helps clear up what the hell that name is. 1400 point week, though, Jesus. Um, so let's see, 60 times 4 plus 20, because I don't want to do the math, divided by 6, it's about 40 minutes per person. So Mike Johnson was the number one recruit option in the nation, and we're going to see if we can put up a fight for this guy alongside some of the best. So it's at the stage, though, where it's like, I didn't look at, like, any four-star options. So I am going to be able to go out, and even if the five stars are off the board, like, I know I'm going to be able to go out and get some good players. It's just, we have gotten, like, at most, what, two five-star recruits in the same year? So we do kind of have high hopes at this stage to be able to start winning over a lot more of these five stars and if we do i mean it already feels like a matter of time until we win a national title but even more so Getting good point weeks here obviously jesse anderson yeah this will be interesting heading into that next week just to see where we are at Well, I mean, two dudes left, so yeah, still 40 minutes per works. So Mr. Marshall. I didn't mean to hit solid playing time first year on campus, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Let's see how this plays out. And then Chris Scott, Kingston, New York. 195 points on an initial scholarship offer is pretty good, though. Again, we don't even know what some of these guys are good at at this stage. It was just like, ah, throw them onto the board and hope for the best. That's all we can do. Yep, Salani. Fair enough. All right, we do have three hours of uh, scouting time really quickly. I was hoping to honestly already see more like Insta commits to other schools. Like the sooner that happens, the better. Really. Just knowing that certain dudes are off the board. How good is Pollard? That guy's in bus territory. Damn. We'll give it a week, and then if some dudes aren't as good as they appear, then we'll kind of know that we got to cut ties at that stage. Never been more anxious for recruiting. We head to week two. It's Buffalo. 
Little off topic, but what would you say was your favorite NHL series to make? Going through series again soon. God, what was my favorite one to make? Dude, honestly, some of them really do blend together <laughs> at this stage. You know, it, it's weird to say that I've been doing this for as long as I have, right? Um, but especially on the YouTube side of things, right? Man, we have been doing this for a really long time. Um, God, even if I bring up some of those playlists, right? Yeah, let me bring up some of those playlists. How long has it been? God, I got at least two pages worth of playlists now. Yeah. Um... to make. I mean, I still liked some of those HUD series. I thought we had some pretty cool HUD series back in the day. Obviously, it's just a shame that HUD's gone the direction that it did. Uh, the first draft of glory and rebuilding Hockey Town, those were back-to-back -back in NHL 17. Those were damn, damn fun. Uh, Hartford Whaler series on NHL 18 stands out quite a bit, too. Goon Squad was NHL 18 as well. Seattle Sea Cattle was also NHL 18. Jeez, so was my god. NHL 18, I was in fine form. We had a Whalers series, a Hab series, Seattle Sea Cattle, Nation United USA, Ottawa, that short term Milwaukee Ospreys series, and a Buffalo series. Like NHL 18, I was fucking grinding. Good lord. Uh, Bagel, what's up? We had the number one recruitment class in the nation. We are ranked seventh in this preseason and in the running for an incredible amount of five-star prospects. Question is, can we uh, can we make up any ground? So Pollard's still not incredibly sold yet. Um, honestly, for him, it's at that stage where I gotta offer him the rest of the promises and if we don't get into the running here then we know we're out for him I know he's a bust but he's still a five-star quarterback and we know he has good starting speed as well rock flag and eagle damn right uh, Travis Berry we haven't looked at this guy at all I need to know how good your arm is, buddy, before I waste any time. Yeah, that throw power. Had a feeling. Um, same thing. We'll go 30 minutes for him. It would definitely be different to have a quarterback that's uh, more of a pocket passer and throw first. But, man, with some of the receivers that we've had, there's no reason to not go for it. Uh, running back-wise, Justin Ransom. Whoops, didn't mean to go four. But we'll see. I mean, if again, if this week doesn't make up much ground for Justin Ransom, then there, there's nothing we can do. Again, he's the only five-star outright running back. Oh, wide receiver-wise. Again, every single one of them is a five-star. But if you're a lower overall... And he's still worth going for, right? Because we are at the stage now where we do have to worry about higher overall dudes. Quarterback, I could just use another one because we have someone graduating at the end of the year. Running back's the same thing. Wide receiver, though, is a tough one. Tight end wise, we didn't make up a ton of ground for William Chase. So let's just go off of overall again. Um, this punter. Can't say we made up a ton of ground. For Andrew Wright. Let's get those final few promises out there. Oh, Ypsilani or whatever the hell it is. Mr. Burton. For the record, the stream might go a little bit longer at this stage. I don't know. Still feeling pretty good. 
Looks like for some of these punters, we are, uh, for some of these special teams options, we're not really making up a ton of ground. And if that still appears to be the case heading into next week, we remove them from the board and try to get into the late conversation for some of the other five stars that are still left. That'll be the option. Let's see, Mike Johnson, that number one recruit. It's a weird one. And Bobby Vinson, we're still in first for. Antonio Stanley. Trying to get into the conversation with you, sir. Can we do so is the question. Clay Jefferson, we're down into second. Out of nowhere, Boise State made a pretty big push for him. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Mike Johnson. Already had all the promises made. We're in the running for this dude. I mean, I don't know if we'll be able to get him off of Oklahoma. Holy boomer. Hey, still in my mid-20s. I don't get to be labeled a boomer yet. Wrong side of my mid-20s, but still there. Also, of course, we're talking about Oklahoma, in which case, well, you know, we do have, we do have this on standby, and we have for years. Where the hell is it? JR. Where are you at? Where, where is it? I can't, aha. Uh -huh. Of course, I don't want to get DMCA'd, but, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, Kevin Van, one more week's worth of uh, attempts with you. God, I hate this right now because it's just I'm so antsy. Like, God damn. I'm making the right move, going after the right people. Really interesting to see how this plays out. It's east of Ann Arbor and west of Detroit. Fair enough. It won't be until this next week after we play Buffalo where we really know what's up with some of these guys. Um, it's just a matter of how it plays out. Because once we have all the promises out, if we're still not up there for somebody, I mean, that's how we know, right? If a thousand points worth of promises aren't enough to get us into the top three, then uh, we're definitely out. I didn't even mean to go for that many options for uh, Abe Palmer, but again, the guy's name is Palmer, so we pretty much have to go for him. It's just how it works. Oh boy, we still got a lot of people we haven't talked to yet this week. Shit. Um, I'm gonna have to start switching to 10 minutes instead of 20. So even then we won't fully know this week. Excuse me. Let's see, Randy Mullins. I just don't know how this is gonna play out. Gonna offer Markort the scholarship and see what happens. Ah, damn it. We were in first for him. It was worth a shot. Jeremy Bush. Tyler Brothers. I know you're list you know, rent, you know, trending, I should say, towards being a bust, but he is 6'5. There's a wide out. Gotta pay attention to that. William Chase. How many more do you have left with this team to win a national title? Uh, pretty much until MLB comes out. <laughs> you know? I mean, we're going to consistently be in the running. We're going to consistently have a national title winning team. We have now for almost five seasons. We are going to consistently have that caliber of a squad. It's just, can they actually not blow it, get it done, and win? But I'm willing to try with this team up until MLB comes out. So it leaves us a little bit, you know, about two weeks worth of time. Like I said, within those two weeks, there's, you know, 
not that much I can do. Like, I'm not going to start, like, a full-time NBA or uh, FIFA type of deal just because it would probably have to be dropped once the show comes out. So. Does it not end, like, NHL? Um, what do you mean? In terms of, like, a year limit? I don't know for sure if there's a year limit in this game. And if there is, I don't know what the limit is. I, I seriously wish, you know, the bigger your school, you could add more players to the board, add more scouting time. That would be awesome. But that is not how it works. It keeps it as a level playing field for everybody. No matter where you're at. Chris Scott were in first four already as an athlete. Twenty minutes for Leonard Williams to try and make up ground. I still have to change our offensive scheme this year because the air raid is definitely, definitely not going to work. Let's see, Jesse, we're in first for. Yeah, it's promising that we haven't had to uh, take anybody off the board yet. Obviously, we don't want to visit yet. We got to figure out how good these guys are. And we're looking damn good for Sam Bennett. We could already have an A grade uh, visiting week. All right. So again, uh, we have a quarterback who is fast, has good accuracy, but doesn't have the best arm in the world. So for playing a team like Buffalo, I mean, again, even just the basic offenses, right? Multiple offense is always a go-to. The one back could certainly work. I mean, we do have a fast running back that could pull that off. Spread offense is a bit of a risk, but it could better utilize the quarterback that we have. Pro style could work. You know, the short passing game. Run balanced isn't the worst idea in the world. The option run isn't the worst idea, uh, idea in the world either. I mean, run and shoot as well. I mean, the air raid definitely doesn't. So, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it up to chance. I am going to leave it up to chance for this offense to start this season. So, the pistol definitely could work. The air raid, I'm going to say no. Run and shoot could work. I mean... Obviously, the idea is to not immediately throw it downfield. Uh, even the option run. Good work. We have a pretty good running team. Uh, run balanced. Good work. Pro style. Good work. The spread offense. Good work. One back. Good work. And multiple. Good work. I mean, even then... Fucking air raid could work too. But what we're gonna do is go to our favorite website in the world, Yield Wheel Decide. What is the offensive scheme we're running this year to start the season? And the answer is one back. So congratulations to one back. That is uh, what we're gonna set ourselves to run to begin this season. Will it work? Time will tell. So we'll run the one back. Um. We'll be somewhat passive. Well, I mean, aggressive. We'll go 50 50. And then again, I think we have the defense this year to run a 4 3 outright. Drop those back to 50 50 as well. And take it from there. So we should kick the hell out of Buffalo. I think, as we've learned, I'm pretty much always going to jump in now just to make sure. But I at least want to get to next week before we consider it calling uh, before we consider calling it a stream, just because I need to know where I stand with those recruits. I have to. I have to know. I have to know. Let's see how this works out. Alright. <sighs> we 
should just easily kick the hell out of Buffalo. They are nowhere near good enough to hang with this team. It should be the easiest no-touching that we've ever had. By far. First quarter, 7 nothing. All right, not very impressive so far. 14-0, 21-0. 21-nothing at the half, good stuff. 28-0, 35-0. 42-nothing. 49-nothing, 56-nothing, 59-66 to seven. No touching, no touching, no touching. That's what I'm talking about, damn it. That is what I'm talking about. 66 to 7. I mean, even our backup quarterback, Seth Davis, got into the game, and our starter wasn't even hurt. Lindsay had 174 yards on the ground. Domination. Pure domination, and that's what it should be. We run into a D rated team like Buffalo. And we should absolutely steamroll them. And we did. Very happy with that. Very, very happy with that. It's one of our best wins ever. It should at least hold us in the top ten. Mauling the hapless. What Buffalo team are you playing? So here's the issue. We play Virginia Tech next. And we'll get to that game tomorrow most likely. But that Virginia Tech game is what is going to set the tone for the rest of the season. If we can beat Virginia Tech, and of course they are... Uh, oh man, they're going to be you know, looking to get that revenge from last year. We ruined their season and their shot at a national title. This is where it's going to be interesting. Our first real you know, hurdle to overcome this season. But right now, more than anything... I want to get a look at that scouting board. Where do we stand with some of these dudes? This is the week where we'll pretty much know who's out and who isn't. So, I'm going to have to do a tiny bit of research here on these players to see who we've promised so far and who we haven't, but for the most part, That'll be quick and easy. Bring on Virginia Tech. Yeah, ruined their season last year. Where do we stand? In terms of ranking. Started the season at number seven. Kept the ranking after an inactive week one. Where are we at? Still number seven. That is a huge matchup. That said... We get to recruitment. I look at promises first. So. Again, Gibbons, Owens. Alright, so these are the dudes who we haven't gotten yet. So, at quarterback, Barry has already gotten his three. And uh, Pollard has gotten his three promises as well. At running back, Ransom has had his three. We now are in his top three. Wide receiver, Brothers has only had two. Bush has only had two. Bird has had three. Coley with two. Marquardt with one. Mullins with two. Robinson with two. Tight end, Chase, we've made two promises to him so far. At uh, left tackle, Williams, we've made all three promises to him. At center, Jefferson's gotten his three. Apparently we're in second for him. Right guard, Stanley, he's gotten all three promises. Left end, Parks has gotten two, Rutledge has gotten two, 
Right end, Johnson with two, Keenan with two. Gotta start keeping track of the stuff while I do it rather than having to redo it. Burgess and Bell with two promises each. Outside linebacker, Griffin has all three promises so far, as does White. Let's see, middle linebacker, Wilson with two promises so far. And then right outside, we have Van with all three of his. No safeties, of course, that we're looking at. In terms of kickers, Burton has gotten his three. In terms of punters, Malone, Smith, and Wright, three each. For the athletes, Anderson has gotten his three. Bennett has gotten his three. Johnson with three. Marshall is good. Palmer is good. I can confirm. Uh, Scott with three apiece. And Vincent with his three. All right, that way we know who needs that extra bit of time. So looking at the prospects then. And the quarterbacks. Oh, it's not exactly where I wanted to go. I want to go to our recruitment board. So we're in the conversation for Pollard. Barry, there's not much I can do. I've already offered him the skull. He's going to LSU. Yeah, so Travis Berry is definitely out. Pollard, we're in the top three. He's probably going to LSU as well. I can't make up that ground. Not with all three promises and the scholarship out. So we're out for our top two quarterback targets. As much as that sucks. So from there, the best we can do. Now Barrett, Travis Barrett already commit to Auburn. We know we're out on Barry. We know we're out on Pollard. I can still throw my name into the hat for Patton and Logan. And then if that doesn't happen, we default back to a four-star. So, again, we got to be a lot more hands-on here with this. So, for Patton and, uh, and Logan, let's start looking at these two. Let's go with the 30 minutes per to get those promises out there and we will see if we can make up ground for the final two five-star quarterbacks on the board. If not, we rely on athletes or we rely on four stars. That's pretty much all we can do. Maybe it would have been a better move to see how far into the lead Bama is, but we'll see what we can do. So all three promises out to those guys. Running back wise, we are in the top three for Ransom. All right, we're very much in the fight for Justin Ransom. That's good. Um, I don't know how much time we're putting into him yet. Wide receiver wise. All right, let's look at Bird first. He's the first one that's gotten all three and we're in first for him. That's perfect. Um, there's Coley, we have one more promise for him. So that's good, we're in competition. Mullins in comp ah. Mullins is a tough one I have one more promise left and a scholarship I think we're probably out if we're 500 points back already I don't think one we'll, we'll give it a shot Marquardt we're in first four so that's great again Bush we might still have a shot for Brothers Definitely in the running for Robinson. We're out. We have one more promise for Robinson. And a scholarship, and we're not going to close the gap on Oklahoma. So Robinson, we're out. And then again, Bird, we're still in the running. Let me go double check that there wasn't another five-star wide receiver. Again, it sucks that I'm just not going to be able to make up the ground there for Palmer. Or not for Palmer, for Pollard. And then again, wide receiver-wise for the five stars. All right, that's it for five-star receivers. Nobody else to add to the board yet, then. So we're looking okay. 
The tight end option on the team is William Chase. And we're out. Probably, well, we can give it one more attempt. One more week for him. Um, yeah, if we go with that, that'll be the scholarship offer, and we'll make our final promise. And if that doesn't get us into the running, then we're out for the top tight end and the only five-star tight end in the class. Uh, Leonard Williams, we're in the running for him. That's good, at least in theory. How far ahead is Bama? Oh, we're probably out on Leonard Williams. Um, we've used all, all of our promises and the scholarship's not a good enough offer, so I know we're in second, but I don't think I can close a 500 point gap to Bama. So we're gonna take Leonard Williams off the board. At center, we're probably out on Antonio Stanley as well. Bama's just too overpowered, too overpowered and at center. Uh, we have Jefferson, who we are in the running for. I have no other, um... Oh, God, I have no other uh, promises I can offer him, but we're right there. Defensive end, uh, Keenan. We've made two offers for. We're in the running for him. What about Rutledge? We're out. I have one more promise. It's not going to be able to close the gaps. So we're out on Rutledge. Joe Parks. One more promise in a scholarship. I think we're out on Joe Parks, too. And then Mike Johnson. We're definitely out. One more promise and a, uh, and a scholarship's not enough. So defensive end. We are looking rough. Keenan is the only guy there that's left. Defensive tackle, Mr. Bell. We're definitely out. Burgess, though, we could be okay. Yeah, we're okay for Burgess, at least. Linebackers. Linebackers, linebackers. So let's see. Van, we're in the top three, and we got a shot for Kevin Van. What about Billy Griffin? We're out on Billy Griffin, for sure. And then Nick White. Yeah, we're out on him, for sure, too. All right, so we didn't really need the linebackers. We're down to just one anyway. Uh, except for Wilson, who we're in first for, which is great. Uh, the kicker is J.R. Burton. Very much in the running for him. For the punters. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to put up the fight for these guys. We're definitely out for Marcus Malone. And then Noah Smith. We're in the running there, too. Burton's our best bet. And then for the athletes, it looks like we're in the running for just about everybody. Still in the fight for Marshall. Still in the fight for Johnson. Still in the fight for Palmer. Not bad. So, I mean, I did have to take nine players off the board. But I think we're in a good enough spot where they're off the board early enough. Like I said, I can put up a fight for the rest of the five stars that are left. So again, that's why we have uh, Patton and Logan now, now that we know that we're not in on Pollard. It's just not going to happen. We're still in the fight for Ransom. Fullback-wise, I don't really care. We could just be a scrub. Wide receiver-wise, we're still in the fight. Chase is a last-ditch effort. On the offensive line, again, we took off Williams. Let's add Bain and Copeland. At guard, we'll add... I mean, we still have Stanley, but now, uh, actually, we don't have Stanley anymore. Yeah, no, Stanley's, uh, Stanley's gotta go. So we'll have Pruitt, Armstrong, and Olsen. Center. And Jefferson is still on the board, rightfully so. We'll add Luke Rivers and James Brown. Defensive end, uh, Rutledge, Parks, and Johnson all had to go. Just Keenan. And defensive tackle, I had to remove Bell. And we have Burgess. Which works for me. Linebacker again, Griffin and White had to go. Alright, so the final three dudes can be athletes then, if there are any left. And there are. 
We'll add Herman, Coker, and Allen, just to see who's out there. So I feel a lot better. I have peace of mind now at this stage for the players that have been on the board. So again, quarterback-wise, we don't really know what we're dealing with there or what we're dealing with there yet. Running back-wise with Ransom, again, it depends on the timing. He's just kind of a general recruitment option now. At wide receiver, Coley. Let's go at least a week for him to get that last promise in there and see how far that moves us up. Mullins, it's the same thing. We'll actually go 20 minutes. And we'll give him that final promise and send him out a scholarship offer. Marcourt, we know we're in first for him, so there's less to do. Um, to be honest, though, we can go two here because he only has one promise out there. This should really help separate us and Bama. I can't afford to miss out on any more players to Bama at this stage. Uh, Bush, we can go 20 minutes for you. Okay, your final promise and a scholarship. Brothers, same thing, 20 minutes. Final promise and a scholarship. I'm very close to taking him off the list if he's actually that bad, but it is what it is. And then there's Bird, who we're in first for. Tight end wise, we've already talked to Chase. On the line, uh, we just added Bane. Copeland. So with them, we're going to go for the big push to try and get into the conversation with the three promises and a scholarship. And that way we know right out of the gates with the dudes, or at least the majority of the dudes that we just added to the board, do we have any shot? Because if a 12 to 1300 point week isn't enough to uh, get us into the conversation, then we just know to move on. Yeah, we're going to have to be stupidly hands-on with the recruitment this year. There we go. So we're set up with Copeland. And then at center, we know uh, that Jefferson had to go. So we have Pruitt, Armstrong, and Olsen. And again, we'll uh, give them the full... 40 minute gambit as well just to get into the conversation gotta find out for these guys if we can make any impact Let's see Corey Armstrong Noble Oklahoma good old Noble that spark rating is not quite ideal Dunwoody, Georgia. If only I was going to sim one more week. I would definitely check out what's going on with the pride of Dunwoody. Good playing for us there. Actually, I was wrong because Jefferson is in its center. Those were our guards. Center. Jefferson. Rivers and Brown. And if I'm not mistaken, Jefferson. Had all three promises out. I hope I'm right. So let's see what we got for Mr. Rivers and Mr. Brown. Willoughby Hills, Ohio is also. I don't know if I'm the only one fascinated at how places get their goddamn names, but Willoughby Hills. There has to be an interesting story there. James Brown, Wycliffe, Ohio. What the hell's going on in Ohio with the way they name places? Alright. Uh, defensive end, of course, it's still just Keenan. He only needs 20 minutes. A final promise and a scholarship offer to try and catch up to Oklahoma. 
The same thing with Burgess at defensive tackle. 20 minutes for him. Make that last promise. Give him that scholarship. Linebacker-wise, Van. Nothing we can really do for you this week. Wilson. Get you that final promise. Scholarship. No insta accept. No real surprise. All right, so, I mean, we only got an hour and a half left. Burton, we know we're good. Uh, Wright and Smith, it's in a pretty rough spot. And of course, the only other new guys, it's just the new, the three new athletes. And that's pretty much what we have to do, just go with the promises for them. So there are dudes this week that I'm gonna have to kind of ignore. Hopefully that doesn't uh, hurt us too much, but at least this way we know that we are in the conversation for these guys or not. Heading into next week after this Virginia Tech game, which again, we'll probably get to tomorrow night. It's getting pretty late. Well, didn't mean to do that one, but what are you gonna do? The majority of these promises, though, we probably should hit on anyway, so. And again, Chris Allen, Marshall, Texas. Good Arkansas State out dueling Alabama. That's what happens when you win a national title, I guess. Right, not bad. Not bad. I feel like we've recovered pretty well and we're looking pretty good. Only thing to do. Sort by overall. And uh, let's see what we got. How good is Mr. Ellisville, Mississippi? Justin Patton. That's not a good start. Will they scout out Kevin Van, perhaps? It's not ideal. And the athletes, Mike Johnson. We can get 10 minutes on Bobby Vincent. Not bad. So all things considered, I like where we're at right now. In terms of the scouting, how that looks, being able to stay competitive, you know, being able to identify, like, hey, we're screwed when it comes to this guy early on. Like, we're not going to get him, just bail. And that sets up the biggest of games. Virginia Tech and just our second game of the season. Both teams are undefeated so far. And we've had an interesting history with VT already. Also, Texas just lost to Arkansas. For a team that's projected to be a top three threat, we have to beat Virginia Tech. They're a 97 rated team. I, it's, it's the ACC for as much as we were excited to be here. I mean, there's no doubt about it now. Every year, like we have those games where it's okay. Like this is a big factor. And obviously we're in the easier Atlantic where for 90 rated teams, you have Florida State and Clemson. And both have been struggling. Florida State's down to a three-star program. And they're already 0-2 already on the season. Already 0-2 already. Redundant. But the other side is obviously like Miami, Virginia Tech. Georgia Tech's up there. Virginia you know, dropped off a little bit. It's our biggest rival is Virginia Tech right now for the ACC Conference crown. And hopefully we can jump over them. Like I said, it is one of, if not the most difficult game on the schedule. I wanted to look at the toughest places to play, too. I wonder if we're up... <laughs> 11! UMass Stadium, baby! The 11th most difficult place to play in. We've won seven in a row at home. We have... We nearly have a top 10 fortress. Look out. Where's the easiest place to play? Hold on. Am I allowed to sort? Buffalo. <laughs> Oh, and then there's the University of San Antonio. Meet me at the Alamo Dome. God, I love how many uh, proper names they have. But good stuff. Oh, Virginia Tech. Kind of scared. 